to be connected, to be focused, to be committed. That is something we don't see anymore. Yes, committed to your dream. Anybody can dream it, but you'll never see it until you're willing to be committed to it. I was telling somebody the other day, when I didn't have anything, church didn't have any members, I'd get off work, working at Carbide, and drive up the road and work on the church till I had to turn around and go back to work. We worked when we didn't have food. We worked when we didn't have lights. I was putting my whole check in the offering, all of it, trying to keep it going. When I finally got some staff, I went on the road preaching. And whatever I made on the road preaching, I brought it home to make the payroll of the staff. And sometimes I got them paid and couldn't pay me. Commitments looked like a fool. Didn't have any clothes. Suits was falling off me. Lying and wore out my clothes. Couldn't send them to the cleaners. Had to wash my suit in the washing machine. They laughed at me. Looked like an old raggedy country preacher. I had holes in my shoes. I couldn't kneel down. I couldn't kneel down and pray because if I knelt down to pray, they would see holes in my shoes. They laughed at me. They said that boy's lost his mind. He'll never be nothing. He stutters. He's got a list for these speech. He'll never be a preacher. I don't care what you think. If you are committed to what you believe, you'll never, never bring down somebody who is committed. Because somebody who has really been committed has been down before they ever got up. Add up what you're getting and weigh it against what you're giving and then you will know whether you're really joined to anything. Yeah, people are coming to work, they take a job, they're not committed to the job, they want the check. They want the check. Well, everybody wants some money, baby. I'm gonna say it again, everybody wants some money, baby. I'm just here for the check. That's why it's not gonna work for you. You don't understand the reciprocity. Anybody wants some money, but if you're not willing to give at least as good as you get, it will not last. And that's why you can't stay anywhere or work for anybody because you've never had Levi. You may have had Reuben, you might have had Simeon, but you've never been joined to anything. So you had, you collect anniversaries, you've got a lot of birthdays, you've got some plaques on the wall, but you've never been the person that you could be because the could be is locked up behind commitment and until you're committed, you'll never get the could be. You know what I thought to myself? I thought I would hate to live and die and never know what would happen if I ever committed myself to anything. Some people have never thrown their whole self at nothing. Not at school, not at work, not at marriage, not at church. Oh my God, you had one foot in and one foot out of every dream all of your life and you've never seen what you could be if you ever really connected and threw everything that's what's going to make your death so sad. That's what's going to make it so sad. Is that you never live first. You, you, you never fully engaged. You never fully studied. You never fully invested in anything or anybody. You want to get something that you are not willing to give. You have never been joined. You just wore the dress, got the plaque, they threw the rice, you took the job, but you've never seen what you could be if you threw your whole self at your dream. Reciprocity 
What do you give back for what you get? Without reciprocity, no relationship will ever reach its apex because you're not fully invested in anything you do. So you catch some crumbs that fall from the master's table, but you don't get the children's bread. You get the puppy dog blessing that comes from being in the right place at the right time because you are not joined into the connectivity that produces the real blessing of God in your life. And you're getting older and you're running out of time and running out of excuses and running out of people to blame. Wonder what would have happened in school if you'd been committed. Wonder what would have happened in your marriage if you'd been committed. If you'd have really thrown your whole self You've always been casual and never been committed. And some of the most casual people are talented people. Because talented people will lay on their talent and use their talent as a camouflage to cover up their lack of commitment. And because you're talented enough to be able to float by on broken pieces, you will fool an indiscriminate eye into thinking that you are committed. You're not committed, you're just talented. You'll never know what you could have been if you would have really committed yourself. You're just talented enough to get over and you faked them out. And you've been at 30 or 60 fold when you were created to be a hundredfold person. I just think it would be terrible. I can't be committed to everything. I can't join everything. I can't be married to a thousand women. I can't work a thousand jobs because I take my commitment too seriously to spread it around loosely. You'd be shocked how many people sitting out there who can really sing but they're unwilling to make the commitment to make the rehearsals and do what it takes to be up front. And so they sit there on their talent and they won't do for God what they are asking God to do for them. And they wonder why their prayers are not answered. You take a half committed man and a half committed trifling woman and put them together and they'll have some half committed trifling kids and the whole house will be half committed because children will be what they see. Stop fussing at your kids. They're a reflection of you. Your whole life is a facade. The whole thing is a fake. The whole thing is a front. Your whole life is a camouflage suit. And now you're getting older and you'll never get to see what you could have been because the cost of getting to see it is a commitment that you've never been willing to pay. You're trying to get somebody to fall in love with a you that you've never discovered yourself. You come to the altar and you raise your hand and you say, Lord, I give myself to you, but you don't. You marry somebody and say, you can count on me, I'll be there through the thick and the thin, for better, for worse, for richer and poor and sickness and health. You didn't mean it. Half studied, half worked, half labored, and then wonder why I thought I'd be further than I am at the age. Let me tell you why you are not further. It is not the devil, it is not witches, it is not demons, and it's sure God ain't haters. You are not any further than where you are right now because you have never thrown your whole self at anything in your life. And you think greatness goes on sale. But true quality never goes on sale. If you're not committed, you're not going to make it. Even the ones with the personalities you don't like. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment. You have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you. Or you're not going to make it. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. 
You got to come home when you're in love and you got to come home when you're not in love or you're not going to make it and stay there until the love comes back. It's a commitment. Y'all don't want to hear real truth. You want to hear fairy tale Hollywood shake and bake stuff, but in reality, it's a commitment. Commitment to your dream. You cannot get people to believe in your dream until you believe in it yourself. Stop asking people to invest in things where you have no investment. Stop asking people to deliver something to you where you're not willing to go to the wire for yourself. Nobody's going to put into your dream before you put in. You have to invest in what you dream for. A golf club is just a golf club. You can pay $500 or $5,000 for it. It's just a golf club until you put it into the hands of Tiger Woods. When you put it into the hands of Tiger Woods, the value shoots up. It's the same set of clubs. All you added was commitment. When you get it in the hands of somebody who is committed to a dream, who's been working when they were five, and swinging when they were six, and swinging when they were nine, and swinging when they were 12, oh yes, you're gonna get a great return because there is a great investment. Do you have anything that you're dreaming, that you're willing to be committed to enough to see it happen? The people that are committed are busy doing it. The people that don't feel worthy of it are like a guy I talked to last night who told me, hey, I sure like to do what you're doing. However, I just don't want the responsibility. The company I work for, they're taking good care of me. I say, let me tell you something. Once you increase your sense of worthiness, you won't even be able to open your mouth saying that somebody is taking care of you. You want to take care of yourself. So let us look. I think that all of us are, are committed. But I think that some of us are producing results in our lives that that level of commitment brings that we particularly don't like or find distasteful. I don't think that as a participant in life, you cannot be committed. You're either committed to mediocrity or you're committed to greatness. You're either committed to being productive or you're committed to being non-productive. You're committed to being happy or you're committed to being unhappy. See, whatever you're doing, however you spend your time, that tells you who you are. So think about what it is you like to create in your life experience. Once I look at how you commit your time, once I do an evaluation on how you spend your time, I can tell you exactly what you're committed to. People that say they have dreams or want to open a business or want to do something differently than what they're now doing, they don't like their jobs, they're unhappy, they're unfulfilled. People who say they want to improve their income level, look at how they spend their time. How they spend their time, the commitment of their time, how they use that, that will really tell the truth. People who said, I'd like to do better, but you don't find them in vocational or, or technical schools upgrading their skills and their knowledge. How they spend their time, that will tell you what's going on. People who say they want to normalize their weight, they want to be healthy, but every time you see them, they're eating, that will tell you that they're committed to being obese for the rest of their lives. People tell you they want to stop smoking and they're lighting up at that time. Folks that say, I want to stop drinking and every time you're in their face, they're reeking with alcohol. That will tell you what's going on. Don't have to listen to what they say. Just watch what they do. Commitment shows up in your life in what you do. On the other hand, you can make the commitment to your life that you don't like the results that you have and that you're going to do something about it. See, that power is available to all of us.